This video is an overview of the Delta 5 race timer using the official PCB created by the developers and the software is up on GitHub. We'll be using the RX 5808s from Banggood. These already come with the SPI mod and we usually drop them in here. We'll be using the Arduino Nanos and these can be also found on Banggood, Amazon uh, and many commodity sites. Some female pin headers. Uh, we plan on making this system completely modular, so we'll be putting them in here for instance. We'll be using some 1K resistors. Need 12 of them. We'll be using some 100K resistors. You'll need four of them. And they go here in these spots. We'll use a Pololu 3.3 volt. And it's gonna go here. We use also a five volt and the five volt goes here. And this all hooks up to a Raspberry Pi you need at least an 8 gig card. This is 16. And these are some pin headers for the jumpers um, and interconnecting the boards or Raspberry Pi. These are some uh, heat sinks and do some passive cooling on the RX modules. So here we're going to take the female pin headers and we clip them down to size. So I just took some snips and snipped them down, and you can see them all placed on the board here. They just slide into the pin, the through holes. For your Arduino modules, we have them for the RX modules, and we have them for the voltage regulators or the Pololus. So we take the Arduinos and they just drop in here. You can see the pins would basically line up and you can drop it into place. Pull it loose, you can slide them in right here. And the idea is that everything is modular. So the Arduinos, you can pull them in and out if one fails. The same thing with the RX modules, all four of them. And of course the two different pull it loose. So here I'm gonna show you how to drop in these pin headers they go right in the through holes and we just slide them in and I'll tack one pin down on one end and then I push it from the other side and hold it to make sure that it squares up on the flat surface of the board and then I'll go ahead and continue uh, with the through hole soldering sometimes I switch up sides to not concentrate heat in one specific area but once you get to a certain point you just kind of move through them Go ahead and do the other side. And I use pretty good heat here. You know, I, I don't like to stay in one spot too long. And you can see both rows, no clipping necessary, and it's all square here. So you can easily take an Arduino and drop it in place here. And that's it. So here's all of them completed in the interest of time. And I'll just test fit each one of the four. So I'll just go ahead and drop in each one of the Arduinos to make sure everything lines up and feels snug. And again, this is completely modular. So if something gets damaged, you can easily pull it off, drop in another one. And I have no issues. So you can see all four of them here. So in this section, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install the 1K ohm resistors, these little guys. And they drop in right here. We need 12 of them. So what I do is I just fold down each leg. They bend very easily, so just bend down each side just like this. 
and then you can go ahead and drop them in the board. I like to line them up all in the same fashion that way, you know, the colors are all lined up, things look in order. And they just drop in here and then what I usually do is I'll flip it over and I'll kind of bend these legs out just a little bit to keep it in place while I solder. Here it's just simple through hole. Just go ahead and tack down each pin. They stay in place very well. Just check that everything's lined up and the holes are completely filled. And then I'll continue with the rest of them and you can see they're all complete here. And I've done them for each one of the Arduino sets. So you can see the first one, second one, third one, and fourth one. And they all line up to the respective Arduinos. And then I just clip the excess. Some little side clippers here. And you go through and just clip all of them. So here I'm going to go ahead and use the 100K resistors in these locations. Here, here here and here. Same process, fold down the legs, push them through, quickly tack them down, go ahead and clip the excess materials with some side cutters. And here you can see them all complete, all four, for each one of the respective Arduinos. So now we're going to do the pin headers for the jumpers, these little single pin headers. We clip them and then we drop them in these little spots here. There's a few along the top of the Arduinos, and then you got a couple down the side of the boards which help you make the connection to either another board or to the Raspberry Pi. So after we clip them down, you just drop them in a hole, if you don't have fat fingers like me. So I'll just tack them both down real quickly, push one through and go ahead and do the other one. And here you can see all four complete. So now we're going to do the Pololu female pin headers. They drop in these slots here. It's just a few little pins, you can see four of them. So you've got the 3.3 on the left. Go ahead and flip it over and tack these down. I push them through the other side to make sure they're square and finish them all up. I do the same thing for the 5 volt side. And here you can see how the 3.3 would line up. So we're going to go ahead and start with the RX modules. What we do is we first get the female pin headers in place. They go here in this slot. We just tack one side down, push it through, and go ahead and bang those out. You can see all four done here. In the interest of time, I've sped it up. And then the module just would slide in place. So here in this next step, we're going to go ahead and start snipping the pins for the modules. So basically, I just grab a row of pins, count out nine pins, and cut it off. And then I match it up and cut them up. So you can see here how it lines up on the module. And I'll go ahead and tin the module, all nine pins. Flip it over and make sure I get both sides equally well. Go ahead and tin those same pins that we cut earlier. You don't need a whole lot here. And I'll drop the pin in the board, and then I'll just tack the pins to hold it up against the RX module. And then I'll add a little solder to each pin to bridge the gap between them and make sure they're well seated. So sometimes you got to push a little bit on the pin because there is solder built up behind it. But it'll go ahead and seat once you apply some heat and solder when everything is flowing in there. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and just take a quick look. Looks good. Go ahead and drop all four in and you can st start to see how the board's coming together. So we're going to go ahead and get started on the Pololus. 
the voltage regulators. There's the 3.3 volt. It's only a few pins. You can see four of them here. I'm kind of fumbling around to see how I should line them up so I can put them in the board the way that I want. And this is kind of what I want so I can put it face down. So I'll tack one side. Go ahead and finish the rest in the helping hands. And here's how I want it. Make sure I check the pins so I know where to go. And you can see all four of them here line up and the entire board stays flush. Electronics are all about the same height. So here's the five volt. Again, I'll tack one side down. Go ahead and finish the other three pins. And I'll drop the other one. And here again, you can see they're all the same height. The electronics are all kind of flush. So we've got all the RX modules. We've got the two voltage regulators and our four Arduinos. We're pretty close. So I'm going to show everyone how I connect my battery power. Some 14 gauge wire. We go ahead and tin the ends. Pretty straightforward. Get my connector ready. Fill with solder. Apply a little heat. And go ahead and slide the cable down. Do the same thing for the positive lead. Apply a little heat slide the cable down. We go ahead and put our shrink wrap over the ends. And then we would shrink it down with some heat. I didn't do it in this shot. So then what we do is line up to kind of get an idea of how much we need to clip off the ends here. So I'll go ahead and line them up quickly and strip the ends. Tin both wires as well. Positive and negative. And what I'll do is I'll line them up on the back of the board actually, because this is where I want them to drop off. I'm going to lay them horizontal off the board, so I'll go ahead and tin both sides, apply a little heat. I've got a pretty big tip on here, so it transfers heat very well. I'll flip it over and kind of fill in those little grooves with a little more. Then I'll go ahead and drop in our little jumpers. And that's it. So now we're going to do some basic electrical testing with the multimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and first plug in the battery. Everything lights up here. No smoke, so we're looking good. I'll go ahead and test the mains. This is a three cell, not storage voltage basically. I'm going to go ahead and try the voltage out pin on the first pillow loop, 5 volts. The V out pin on the second pillow loop, 3.3 volts. So it looks like the voltages are okay. I'll go ahead and try the jumpers that would go to the next board or over to the Raspberry Pi. So we can see 3.3 here and five here. So we have no electrical problems, so we're looking pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and drop in the little single pin headers that either jump over to the next board or the Raspberry Pi. So they drop in here in these slots. Pretty easy, just hold them down and apply some heat and finish them all up. You can see all three done here. So essentially I could either go directly to the Pi for just a, a four pilot system. Or I can interconnect two boards for a total of eight pilots if I wanted to. So here we'll go ahead and put everything on the board. And this is a four pilot system. We just go ahead and add the Pi next to it if we wanted to. And we can go ahead and track four pilots uh, no problem. Stay tuned for the next video where we're going to install the Arduino software, install the Raspberry Pi operating system, and the Delta 5 software. Thank you for watching.